Now, this is a story that really has blown up and something that we need to talk about because a lot of games journalists, pundits, and even developers have gone on the attack. In my last video, we discussed the Vulture interview, which included a lot of comments coming from Rockstar Games co-founder Dan Hauser on the development of Red Dead Redemption 2. Fortunately though, one of Hauser's comments has been taken out of context, this comment being, We were working 100 hour weeks several times in 2018, which has created controversy, with many attacking Rockstar our games claiming poor work conditions and mismanagement. Dan Hauser was fast to clarify his comment saying in a statement, there seems to be some confusion arising from my interview with Harold Goldberg of Vulture. The point I was trying to make in the article was related to how the narrative and dialogue in the game was crafted, which is mostly what we talked about, not about the different processes of the wider team. After working on the game for seven years, the senior writing team, which consists of four people, Mike Unsworth, Rupert Humphreys, Laszlo, and myself, had, as we always do, three weeks of intense work when we wrapped everything up. Three weeks, not years, we've all worked together for at least 12 years now, and feel we need this to get everything finished. After so many years of getting things organized and ready on this project, we needed this to check and finalize everything. More importantly, we obviously don't expect anyone else to work this way. Across the whole company, we have some senior people who work very hard purely because they're passionate about a project or their particular work, and we believe that passion shows in the games we release, but that additional effort is a choice and we don't ask or expect anyone to work anything like this. Lots of other senior people work in an entirely different way and are just as productive. I'm just not one of them. No one, senior or junior, is ever forced to work hard. I believe we go to great lengths to run a business that cares about its people and to make the company a great place for them to work. So yes, this 100 hour a week comment was about writers who want to work these hours, but unfortunately this story is still far from over as claims from ex-employees are now popping up. But before we proceed and discuss what ex-employees and disgruntled ones are claiming, I think it's important to note not everyone feels this way. This is a large studio, and yes, Rockstar Games has problems, but you want to know another developer who had similar issues that got outed last year? That'd be CD Projekt Red. We discussed this in a video about 43 developers talked about their time working on games that include The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and Cyberpunk 2077, with some saying they loved the studio and others saying they hated it. But there was one standout quote coming from a current CD Projekt Red employee that is extremely relevant to this current Rockstar game mess. The employee did not want to address the then claims of poor work conditions, but did want to talk about their experience at the studio, saying, Do you think that SpaceX employees always work 8 hours per day, have no stress at work, never have to push themselves to the limits, and are always happy and undisturbed? Do you think every single employee believes in all Elon Musk's decisions and competences? Now, does anyone seriously believe that what SpaceX does is easily achievable with no stress, no crunch, no conflicts, and no sacrifices from anyone but but Elon himself? Are you worried that SpaceX will fail because one or two engineers left unsatisfied? What I want to say is that CD Projekt made me feel like I launched a space rocket. If I wanted to drive a tricycle, I would apply to kindergarten instead. Again, that's coming from a CD Projekt Red employee. The full video in question will be linked in the description below. But this certainly does not excuse bad work conditions like with what happened recently at Telltale Games. But the thing is, I at least right now believe that some people love working at Rockstar Games and others clearly do not. But that's just my takeaway and I could be completely wrong about this. Now, as I said before, claims against Rockstar Games are now popping up. The first coming from Dylan Wildman, who worked at the company in 2012 on Grand Theft Auto V as a quality assurance tester, and he responded on Twitter to the 100 hour a week story saying, Survivor of GTA V crunch here, it was hell. He would further add details about Grand Theft Auto V's crunch, which if you're unaware, crunch in gaming means when hours increase because a deadline is closing or the team is falling behind. Usually crunch involves developers working insane hours, but the ex-Rockstar developer would say this about Grand Theft Auto V's crunch. Probably 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. That's what he worked. Sometimes we were given the choice of which weekend day we wanted off. Probably lasted for a year as the crunch hours go on way past release to cater for post-releases, DLC, etc. Crunch is something looked down upon in gaming, with many calling for it to end as the result of crunch time is developers getting burned out. Overworking employees is a widespread problem that is not solely linked to gaming. But continuing on, Aaron Stewart on, who worked with the company about a decade ago, took to Twitter saying, I've worked in the film and games industry. Speaking only for myself, there have been times where I've worked 100 hours in a week happily and proudly. Rockstar, I quit after only a few months. 
Roisy Proven, who worked with the company also about a decade ago, part of Rockstar North's quality assurance team, taking to Twitter saying, I worked 80 hour weeks at Rockstar until I had a breakdown. If I had not, my contract would have been terminated. There are plenty of ways to force a person. F you very much, and that was directed at Dan Hauser's clarification, which has not gone over well with many. But Roisy would continue, at one point, three people lived in my one bed flat, working three different shifts because quality assurance was working 24 7. We took turns sleeping. This was a decade ago, but I suspect not much has changed. That place is a toxic mess, and I am finally far away enough from it to be done being scared of saying this. Now, something that is being overlooked is an extremely accurate Red Dead Redemption 2 spoiler-filled leak which came over three years ago, in which a developer where somebody connected to the company just leaked a ton of Red Dead Redemption 2 story, character, setting, gameplay, and development information. This leak has proven to be real with the reveal of Arthur Morgan and just a whole lot more. Nobody took this leak seriously until we saw more and more of this game, but this developer also talked about the development of the game and said it was hell. Specifically, they wrote three years ago, before the game was even announced, the last I heard, which was a few months ago, and obviously again this was taken in 2015 or 2014, so this few months ago was years ago, but they said, the game was kind of stuck in development hell of sorts. The team kept remaking a vertical slice demo for the leaders of Rockstar and they are not impressed. They didn't find it different enough or innovative enough. Hopefully they get out of that rut. I've also heard that since Grand Theft Auto 5, morale at Rockstar San Diego has been bad. Long timers are quitting, lots of turnover, lots of frustration. Rockstar Games has had issues in the past. All the way back in 2010, wives of employees at Rockstar San Diego made public the horrible work conditions at the studio. They painted a picture of a toxic workplace in which employees were forced into working overtime and punished for not complying. But this seems to be a story that will only keep going, as Kotaku's Jason Schreier, who is notable for his big gaming articles, often giving insight into a lot of the chaos that has gone into developing games like Mass Effect Andromeda, took to Twitter saying, Truth is, I've been working on an article about work conditions at Rockstar for quite some time now. Yesterday's story has ramped things up. Right now, there are people calling for a boycott of Red Dead Redemption 2, which, I'll be honest, this story has not changed my excitement for Red Dead Redemption 2, and I promise you the average Carl and Susie and Joe don't care about this. They see a fun game and they plan on buying it, and I guarantee the majority of people watching this video probably feel the same way. I mean, I took this story first to Twitter, and judging by the comments I read, I think I know how, well, I think I know how many will respond to this video in the comment section below. I mean, someone legit responded to this story saying, I don't mean to sound like an a-hole, but if this gets my games to me even a little faster, then mistreat the employees, lol. Yeah, I'm shaking my head right now, and, and another responding to news that Jason Schreier will have an article on the work conditions that Rockstar saying, and if all this comes out, then they will have to do normal hours and we won't get bullied to until 2050, damn. Also, numerous people were telling me the disgruntled employees could just quit, but people, you need to understand, there isn't a game developer next door in every single state. Right? Game companies are worldwide, and many employees have to move their entire families to different countries. I mean, Telltale Games, before they fired everyone just one week before, were hiring people. And someone had just made a cross-country move for a position at Telltale Games. Anyway, I'll end this video by saying Rockstar Games is a massive developer with thousands of employees. From what I've gathered, clearly some people love working at the studio and others not so much, which is often how jobs work. But the outrage over the 100 hours a week comment coming from Dan Hauser is fake. Although the other stories coming from ex-employees are very real. But an interesting thing to note is many of these stories come from years ago, and I do wonder with a studio that has changed much since Leslie Benzies departed a few years ago, what is it currently like? like at Rockstar Games, but I guess we're gonna find out soon as Jason Schreier may be the one to shed light on that. But yeah, my excitement for Red Dead Redemption 2 is not impacted by this news at all, although I do think many people need to understand human beings make games, and without their talent, games do not get made. But also, Telltale Games lost a lot of talented people because of mismanagement, leading to inexperienced developers filling important positions, and ultimately, with the best talent gone, more and more issues came to be. Obviously, I don't believe that is what's happening with Rockstar Games, but the games they make are special because of the people who are making them. 
and that goes for any of your favorite developers. Anyway, that's just my perspective. Maybe you have a differing one. Let me know down in the comment section below your thoughts. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value. And also consider subscribing for much more Red Dead Redemption 2 content to come as I'm one of your best sources on this upcoming game. And remember, Outlaws for life.